Hi, I'm Sonia Levesca. I'm a senior epidemiologist at OCRU in Hanoi, um, and I'm interested in antimicrobial resistance. My work particularly takes a, a, a macro scale focus, so I'm using a, a One Health approach to look at antibiotic use and antibiotic resistance in humans, animals and the environment and the intersections between those, trying to understand the pathways of, of transmission between the different sectors and also develop interventions to, to tackle the overuse of antibiotics and also the resistance that gets transmitted between those different areas. We recently completed and published a trial in The Lancet, which was one of the largest trials I think done by the unit including 40,000 patients in primary care centres. Um, we had 48 primary care centres in a northern province of Vietnam and we were trying to test um, in a pragmatic trial, so in a kind of a real world setting, what happens when you introduce a point of care test for primary care doctors to help them to guide their antibiotic prescribing and, and hopefully reduce the amount of antibiotics that are prescribed unnecessarily. We found that there was a significant reduction in prescribing of antibiotics by primary care doctors, um, but it wasn't as large as we'd hoped, and so now we want to do further research based on interviews that we did during the intervention to understand barriers to using the test. So not all of the, the patients who are eligible to have the test received the test, and we want to understand the patient factors and the doctor factors that made the decision about whether or not the, the test could be used for them to, to guide this antibiotic prescribing. Um, and then we've got plans to do further research. We've just done a feasibility study about using point of care tests outside of formal healthcare settings. So using them in, in pharmacies, which are actually a more popular point of care for, for mild infections in the community. So most people would go to a, a pharmacy first when they have symptoms of a respiratory infection. And we wanted to see if we introduced tests in that setting, whether or not we could have an impact on the drugs that are, are given and sold over the counter without a prescription by replacing the sale of an antibiotic with the sale of a point of care test. The Just Transition Initiative um, is a group of 20 social science and humanities researchers. Um, it's very interdisciplinary and very global as well. So the, the programme members are from many different countries across the world and come together to explore Really, when thinking about policies to address and mitigate antimicrobial resistance, thinking about the, the, the justice concerns that, that arise, um, thinking about equity and fairness in terms of policies, um, but also possible unintended consequences. So, for example, if we restrict um, antibiotic use in farming, those farmers, and particularly the ones whose incomes are, are kind of very tentative, may be most impacted by, by measures to, to remove anti, antimicrobials from their, from their use. So it may, may impact on their livelihoods. And similarly, in, in communities where these drug sellers or pharmacies are one of the most important sources of essential medicines for people, and the, the healthcare infrastructure to deliver primary care and, and important health services in the community is limited or lacking completely, if we remove over-the-counter access to, to antibiotics and other medicines, then, then that might have implications for health. So it's just really trying to make those tensions visible, not to say that we shouldn't introduce those measures, but just to make the tensions visible so that, that policies and strategies that are developed are appropriate and fair. Over the next two years of the programme, um, we plan to further the work in understanding and looking at contextual ways in which Just Transitions can be applied for AMR and also looking at what we can learn from Just Transitions for climate change. So we want to have conversations with people who are already thinking about Just Transitions for climate change and thinking about strategies um, to help accelerate progress towards climate change targets and really identify whether there are synergistic actions that would have co-benefits for mitigating climate change and also AMR, so particularly in the space of intensive livestock production, which is, um, is driving a lot of methane emissions and contributing to global warming. It's also really a, a kind of a hotspot area for AMR activity. And so if we can develop forms of livestock production that are more sustainable and have less impact on both climate and AMR, then that would be a win-win for both situations. There's growing understanding about the connections between climate change and, and AMR's problems. Um, they're, they're both 
collective action problems that require coordination across multiple sectors and they're, they're, they're termed as super wicked problems because of the kind of complexity of dealing with them. But there are also um, biological connections between the, the two problems in, in networks of activities, human activities particularly, that connect them. And so, for example, I've mentioned already that livestock production is something that contributes to both um, greenhouse gas emissions and also the, the development and dissemination of antimicrobial resistance. But there's feedback there, so, so increasing temperatures may also accelerate the development of resistance by increasing bacterial populations in the environment, but also potentially accelerating the, the process of transfer of resistance between bacteria. So that's something that really needs further investigation, something that our group would like to learn more about in future.